The development of a research proposal is often an integral part of the process of conducting formal research, especially academic research. In this brief presentation, we will discuss the general structure and contents of a research proposal besides its definition. So we will begin with the definition of a general definition of a research proposal and then we will move on to the general structure and contents of a research proposal and then we will briefly differentiate between the research proposals uh, for quantitative research studies and qualitative research studies. So first of all, um, what is a research proposal? Uh, generally, a research proposal is a formal, structured, written document that summarizes the background, aims, proposed methodology, the timeline, budget, and possible outcomes of a research study under consideration. So in brief, we can say that a research proposal is a brief roadmap of a proposed research. Now, what is the aim of a research proposal? Or in other words, why is it important that we need to have a research proposal before we begin the process of the formal process of conducting a research. So the main aim of a research proposal is actually to convince uh, the research committee if the proposal is actually developed by research students or the funding agencies or funding bodies if the research proposal is developed by professional researchers um, about the feasibility and utility or significance of the proposed research study. So firstly, whether the research is feasible, that is something that, is, that will be reflected in the research proposal. And secondly, the research is useful or significant, that is something that will be reflected, that should be reflected in a research proposal. And the, the other thing because of uh, which it is important that we need to have research proposal is that it helps in the beginning or the starting of the research process with clear aims and a plan of action and that is something that is very important in the formal process of, of conducting a research project. Now generally the general structure of the research proposal could be, um, could be thought of in terms of asking these five important questions. So the first one is the research proposal should have the what of the research process. Uh, or what research is actually taking place? What type of research is actually taking place? Um, then why, the why of it? the how of the research process, the when of the research process, and the so what of the research process. These are, the, these are some of the questions that are responded to the most, or, or perhaps the most important questions that are responded to in the research proposal. So the general structure of the research proposal will revolve around these five important questions. Uh, we will now move on to uh, the essential contents of a research proposal. So the first one is that every research proposal generally should have a title or a topic around which the research proposal or the research project revolves. Uh, so the title is an important and essential component of the research proposal. The second one is the introductory part which actually includes the an introduction to the research topic on which the uh, the proposal is actually about which the proposal is written besides this part should have research objectives so what are the research objectives um, 
so generally there are there could be one or more research objectives around which the research process revolves then there are also research questions and in some cases there are research hypotheses the inclusion of research question or research objectives or research hypotheses will depend on the kind of research that we are conducting then the next important component of the research proposal is the statement of the problem or issue so what problem or what issue is being explored in this particular research uh, so there is again a brief background of that particular problem uh, that the problem is uh, uh, identified and is defined clearly in the research proposal then we also need to have uh, to identify the significance or importance uh, of conducting the, this particular study. So there is, there is a section on the significance or importance of the particular study that we want to conduct, that we want to represent in the research proposal. Then the rationale, or in other words, the reason behind uh, the, uh, the formal beginning or process of conducting the particular research. So the rationale is very important. Why is it that we are conducting this particular study? What research gap is being filled? And what is the need for conducting this research? So this, this will be covered in the rationale sec section of the research proposal. Then delimitation or setting the boundaries on the, on the research. So what boundary, what are the boundaries um, in, uh, inside which we are conducting the research generally research uh, is focused and so it has to be done in terms of this of of the scope of the particular study or the particular topic so that is something that is covered in the delimitation this is something that is generally the delimitation section is something that is generally included in quantitative research studies in social sciences then the background, the next section is the background or literature review section. Uh, this is not a very long section in, at the proposal stage. So later on at the thesis stage or the uh, complete report stage, we can include um, a literature review in more depth. But at this stage, <clears throat> we need to have some introduction to the, uh, the previous literature or previous studies that have been conducted um, around the topic on which we are working. So, the, so there is some background or literature review and towards the end of that literature review generally there is a gap analysis. So a gap um, is identified. The gap could be in terms of theoretical gap or it could be conceptual gap or it could be methodological gap. Um, whatever a gap is identified and then uh, generally the aim of this particular research is then to actually fill that, that particular gap, uh, research gap. Then the next section that is generally included in the research proposal is the research methodology section. Um, and in this section there is, there is description and justification of the research design, the research sample, the data collection and analysis processes and methods, and also the authentication, the ways the research uh, will be authenticated, uh, and also the validity and reliability issues are briefly discussed in the research methodology section. Uh, we also need to have an expected outcomes um, of the research. So what is it that we expect um, to get at the end of the research process? That is something that we need to, so a section should be included uh, and this, this could be like in a paragraph form or in bullet form, um, but this is an essential part generally of the research proposal. Then the proposal also need to have the timeline line or schedule. So we need to properly plan the research process, the various steps, the time, 
uh, and the duration of the various steps of the research. That is something very important. And so there is, ten, although this is tentative, it's not a finalized timeline. Generally, a research process is uh, flexible in many ways. Um, and there are many things that one cannot preconceive um, correctly or exactly, but there should generally be a timeline so that the examiners or uh, those who are funding the research process could have an idea of about the when and where of the research process. And lastly, uh, because we have given some background and, and we have included previous studies both in terms of literature review and in terms of methodological issues. So there, there are references as well and appendices so in some cases if the research tools are developed such as the questionnaires or interview schedules or observations, those are included at, as appendices. And especially if if budget, uh, budgeting is also an important part, if funding is actually involved or funding is sought through the process of, of, the, uh, of the proposal. So these are the essential components of a general research proposal. Now, uh, the, there are many similarities between research proposal for qualitative and quantitative studies. But there could also be um, some differences uh, as well. So we will briefly discuss the general structure and then what are the similarities and differences of the research proposals for qualitative and quantitative studies. So generally, in both cases, um, we have these sections, but, but, but generally the quantitative research design is, uh, especially at the proposal stage, is generally pre-decided and it's, it's not very flexible. Um, so, for example, the topic is pre-decided. Pre it is actually pretty much uh, based in previous literature. The gap has clearly been identified and as a result we have a more concrete, solid form of research topic. Um, then in quantitative studies, because we have positivistic approaches, so that is reflected in the research proposal. Uh, generally the aim of quantitative studies is confirmatory, confirmation of theories and as a result so uh, the quantitative research proposals are theory driven. The research objectives are clearer, more, more concrete, and less flexible. Similarly, the case with research questions that are pre-decided. Pre and in many cases, in quantitative studies, especially in experimental studies, we have research hypotheses. And um, they are actually based uh, on our previous knowledge. Um, because of the substantial coverage of theoretical basis of quantitative studies. Then the research design is less flexible. We have a timeline or schedule. Again, this is, this is something that is more concrete and, and um, uh, more, you can say, rigid, both in terms of timeline or schedule. And then we have gain resources and references. So in terms of structure, you can see that these are very similar. But on the other hand, in qualitative research, the research design is generally, is generally emergent and flexible. So it's not entirely predecided. Uh, although there is some, some consideration, some level of research designing in the beginning, but there is, uh, this is emergent and this is flexible because the theoretical base is not very, uh, generally not very solid. And generally, the theories come out of our data rather than the data explaining or confirming our theories. So again, because of the emergent and flexible nature, the topic is also changeable. So the topic is evolutionary and so there could be changes in the mid or towards the end of the research study. This um, 
approach is uh, informed by the interpretivist approach of, uh, of research. Then uh, qualitative research is generally exploratory in nature and data driven rather than theory driven as is the case with quantitative studies. Then the research objectives, research questions are flexible and they keep on changing, keeping in view the data that is coming and in keeping in view the researchers increasing insights into an understanding of the research phenomena including the research data or the interpretation of the research data. So there is more flexibility and as a result uh, towards the end of the research process in many cases the research objectives have substantially changed, the research questions have substantially changed. Generally we do not have exact hypotheses uh, like quantifiable hypotheses uh, as we have in the quantitative studies but we have some edu we can have certain educated guesses in the qualitative studies that we can include in our research proposal then the research design is flexible again the timeline and schedule is flexible because of the emergent nature of the whole process of qualitative research uh, which is actually based on our increasing understanding of the phenomena as we get in touch with and we get uh, in a greater insight into the data and the interpretation that is coming out of the data. And so again there are sources and the references um, in the qualitative research as well. But the sources and references in the qualitative uh, research proposal are substantially, generally, substantially uh, lesser in number, mainly because um, we do not have sufficient theoretical background or theories or previous studies uh, as we have in the quantitative studies. So here, because of the explorative nature of the research, uh, we generally, uh, our, our support actually comes from the data rather than from previous literature. So that is why initially, especially in at the proposal stage, there will be lesser number of sources or references used in the qualitative uh, research proposal.